everyone, this is Lou DiAventura from Big Sky Aviation talking to you today about the steps involved in doing a successful VFR flight plan. Um, it's important you have your current sectionals, um, current uh, pilot's operating handbook, and a uh, airport facility directory in order to do a successful flight plan. You also need a plotter, an electronic E6B computer, cross-country log sheets, uh, a nav sheet, and a flight plan. Uh, today's um, sample, uh, what I did was I did a flight from uh, Millville Airport, my hometown airport, uh, to Lancaster, uh, Pennsylvania. And when you do uh, this, you need to place your uh, plotter on the map sectional and do it in increments, um, or again, I did it mine in 10 mile increments um, to give a better understanding. Um, you need to do a map recon also too, and the map recon also gives you an idea of where, if you have any problems, if you have, need to make emergency landings or you need to you know, refuel and stop for any kind of emergency procedure, somebody's got sick or you have to go to the bathroom. Um, you should also have a survival kit uh, for the for this you know the terrain that is below you. Um, you also need to determine your minimum safe altitude, and you have to also determine the traveled airspace you might be going through. If it's prohibited, restricted, if you have any TFRs, or if you're going traveling through Class Bravo, Charlie, or Delta airspace. Um, try to avoid using water towers um, or even small towns because they all kind of look alike and that'll make it much more confusing as you're traveling in the air uh, from your um, departure to your destination. So if you see these pictures here you can see that the, those are hard to see. Uh, rivers are good to use, railways are good to use, Race tracks are great to use because they provide a larger um, picture for you to see what's going on out there as you're flying. In this step, you're going to use your plotter to determine your uh, route of flight, which is also your true course. So place your plotter on a sectional. My plotter is on the sectional and I'm using the longitudinal lines to get my true course. With my plotter I use the longitudinal uh, axis and uh, matching them up with the arrows that are pointing straight up. Our next step now is to take that information, your true course, and put them on your cross-country log sheet with your checkpoints as I did here in the sample. Another step is to fill out all the information uh, at your destination airport and the VORs that you would be following too. I've also listed uh, VORs that I'd be using as a cross check. A cross check is very important because you need to know where you are at all times of your flight. Your next step is to contact the flight service station at 1-800-WX-BRIEF and from the weather briefing you have to fill in the winds. Uh, compute your true airspeed by using your POH and your electronic E6B computer. Your next step is to compute your true heading. Your true heading is your true course corrected for winds. Your next step is to compute your magnetic heading. Magnetic heading is true course corrected for variation. Remember that east is least and best is west. Isogonic lines are the magnetic or purple dashed lines on your sectional chart. On my sectional, it's 12 degrees to west, as I have it depicted here on this picture. The next step would be to compute your compass heading. Compass heading is magnetic heading corrected for magnetic deviation. 
To do that, obtain that from your aircraft compass deviation card located at the base of the compass. Next would be to use your plotter to measure the distance on each segment. Be sure to use the 1 and 500,000 scale on your plotter and then you can fill in your navigational log with that information. Next would be to compute your estimated ground speed using your electronic E6B computer. Fill in your navigational log with that information. Next step would be to compute your fuel burn. Uh, use your aircraft POH to determine that information. With that information, fill in your nav log. Once your nav log has been completed, it's time now to fill out your flight plan with the pertinent information. Call the flight service station at 1-800-WX-BRIEF and give them the information that you filed in your flight plan. Remember to open your flight plan and also please remember to close your flight plan. Search and Rescue starts 30 minutes past the flight estimated time of arrival. Search and rescue costs the government approximately $40,000 per hour. The next step, and it's probably most, the most important step, is to do an unsafe checklist. If you as the pilot are unsafe to fly, then this flight should be canceled. Thank you.